we are working with the knee, and yet it's important right at the beginning to remember that the knee isn't just the knee. The knee reflects what's going on everywhere in the leg and everywhere in the body. I'm just working again with the outer layers, and I'm going to start in an afferent manner. I'm mostly just sensing on my side, and I assume that's comfortable, Aaron. Okay. So you said you had a bit of history with this knee. It's been ongoing for years on the medial side. Medial side. Okay. We're going to work generally in this first sequence, uh, the outer layers of the knee as a way to prepare for the deeper work we're going to do. Not because the deeper is better, by the way, not because the deeper is the real stuff. This is the real stuff too. But we're going to use this onion effect where we really unwrap the la outer layers of the knee uh, in, the, in a sequential manner to really uh, shift movement patterns and shift especially proprioception because there's a lot of sensation in those outer layers. Even though we tend to think about the knee being bone or ligament or meniscus, which are very deep structures, a lot of the pain people experience comes in the outer layers. And then my touch is going to vary too. My touch is going to vary from very uh, sensing and soft and subtle, which I'm going to call an afferent touch after the afferent nervous system that takes information back to my spinal cord, sensory information, to a more direct touch where I'm actually moving things and mobilizing and we're going to call that an efferent touch after the efferent nervous system which sends motor signals and other kind of signals out to my periphery. And there is a different tissue quality right in there. Is that sensitive at all? Not right now. Not right now. Great. Okay. So I'm just moving the outer layers of the knee around and in an afferent way, sensing way. And now I go efferent, meaning I'm going to actually put in some impulse, some motor input. Your hands are going back and forth. They're not going in one direction. Yeah, I'm, I've changed to the Indian burn effect here a little bit, where I'm feeling the ability of those tissues to actually slide over each other and to have some elasticity in them. So it's both about getting the tissue layers to slide on their neighboring layers, but also to be elastic and pliable in and of themselves. It's all doing okay? So we could actually add, this has all been passive on his part, we could add a little active component. So what happens if you l gently lift your knee a little bit and let that go? So if I found like there, there's an, a place that doesn't move as much, I take it to its limit, and now you go ahead and lift and lower as a way to add another element to the technique. And you're just holding still at that point when he's active? Yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, I'm waiting for the tissue to release more than continually moving. One more time if you want, yeah. Now is that comfortable on your low back? Okay, some people when they lift their knee, you know, it puts a more lordosis into the low back, in which case I'd actually bring this knee up. Foot on the table would tend to give him a stable base to go lift the knee from. Indications for uh, the kind of work on, you know, that we're doing here. Uh, mobility restrictions, following our goals. Someone can't comfortably or fully straighten or bend their knee. Pain, which is, in, you know, it's a nociceptive, but you can say it's a proprioceptive component. So we're working in the realm of proprioception there if the knee hurts in different ways. Uh, a history of injuries or instability. Those are, the, again, the, the indications we could go down a big list, and I think I will in the lecture. By the way, if you're watching the recording, watch the lecture because the lecture is going to lay the groundwork for a lot of the hands-on stuff that I'm focusing on now. After 15 years, I was getting a little bored with it. I asked some friends, well, what's next? Where would I go? And, and a number of them said, till. And so I came to one class, and now I've been to probably 20 or 25 classes. I've got my CAMT certification, and I've already taken most of those classes again. And it's a real simple reason. It works. It makes me incredibly confident. And the other thing that it's not just confidence in what you're doing, it gives you confidence to branch out a little bit. And someone says, well, I've got sciatica, like we're taking a class today in sciatica. Three weeks ago, I had a class in rib work and immediately went back and started doing more rib work.